welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be entering into our world of magic as we continue our process of painting up the playing pieces from Hero Quest. Brains. Today we're going to be painting up those horrors of the undead, the zombies. Now, I absolutely love zombies as a genre. Walking Dead, the Romero movies, Shaun of the Dead, and the Return of the Living Dead movies. I absolutely love them. Special effects, prosthetics. Oh, I just love zombie movies. One of my favorite genres. So to see that they've included zombies in this game, I absolutely love that. And these guys with their huge cleavers are looking pretty deadly. So let's see if we can get them painted up so they can give those heroes a run for their money. Well, let's get painting. To start with, I'm putting down a base layer of Flayed One Flesh. This is just a very pale colour that I can put washes over the top of, but it's got a slightly pinky fleshy tone, but will still look good as undead skin. In order to give the skin a nice decayed, rotted look, I'm adding a wash over the top of it. I'm using a nice Drakenhof nightshade here, so a nice blue kind of tinge to that dead skin. But obviously you could use a green wash or a kind of pinky purple wash as well. Now that's obviously looking very blue, so I'm just going back with that flayed one flesh and dry brushing over all of the raised areas to pick out that detail and to get some of that skin tone back. Now obviously that creamy white shade dry brushed over the top of that dark blue is a really stark contrast and it kind of pops too much. It doesn't go together. So I'm using this Temple Guard blue to dry brush over the top of that and that's going to blend these two colours together more and make it more of a natural gradient. Now those highlights are a little bit too blue, so I'm just using a little bit more of the Flayed One Flesh, watering it down slightly and then dry brushing it on. So this is kind of like a little bit of a dry brushed glaze on here, but it just ties those colours together nicely so that it all goes well and it blends and that should give us a good dead look to our skin. I'm going to start on some of the details now so I'm using this Eshin Grey in order to paint in the hair. Again just using a little bit of water to thin that down a bit particularly so that the edges of that hair aren't too sharp, too stark against where it meets his bald decaying head and I'm going to feather it in slightly so it goes together nicely. For his half mast ripped trousers I'm using a bit of Screamer Pink here. You can see whereas before with the dry brushing I was using a really frayed old brush because it doesn't really matter with dry brushing. With this I'm starting to use much nicer paint brushes which are a lot thinner, a lot better tips on them. These ones I take care of. My dry brushing ones I don't because there's no need for it. Thondia Brown next in order to paint in his leather belt holding up his trousers and again fine brush and being careful not to get it onto the screamer pink that I've just painted on but it doesn't matter if it goes onto his shirt because I'm going to be painting over the top of that anyway. For his belt buckle I'm using Hashut Copper and as you can see I'm actually using an even finer brush for this. This is probably the fiddliest bit on this particular model so I'm taking my time and doing this carefully. I then want a nice dark brown for the wooden shaft of his giant cleaver here. So I'm using a Rhinox Hide Brown and again just being careful to paint that on, not getting it onto any of the flesh because that would be a bit of a pain because there's so many layers of that it would be hard to paint over the top of. I decided to use Bugman's Glow for his waistcoat. It's a particular dapper looking zombie, this one. So you just need to be very careful not to get it onto the flesh. There's a lot of flesh adjoining this waistcoat. Again, if you get paint onto that, there's so many different shades in there, it's going to be more difficult to cover up. I then want to go in and add some highlights onto his hair. So I'm using a grey here. This is from Revel. It's not a Citadel paint. I just use whatever I actually have in stock. So again, a little bit of dry brushing, getting those high points. Unfortunately, this hasn't come out particularly in focus, but I'm just using Thondia Brown here in order to pick out the stitching on the back of his waistcoat. 
It's then time to work on the face, so I'm using Flayed One Flesh in order to paint in his teeth. I'm not particularly using a white here because I find white is too sharp, too stark a contrast. With those base colours down, I'm then using a wash of Nuln Oil in order to add some weathering and some dungeon dirt and grime onto his clothing, painting it over the top of his waistcoat and his trousers here, being careful not to get it onto his flesh because I don't want that to go too dark and too grungy, but I do want his clothing to look weathered. Eyes now, and all self-respecting zombies need to have glowing red eyes, so I'm using a bit of Evil Sun Scarlet here with a very fine tip brush in order to get that in those dark sockets so it'll really stand out nicely and he'll look really evil. Now the red looks good but it doesn't pick up so well in that dark hollows of his eyes so I'm adding a tiny tiny highlight of bright orange onto that red which will really make his eyes pop and seem to glow in the darkness. That known oil wash obviously made his clothing a lot more grungy and dungeon dirty, but it has also muted a lot of the colour. So I'm going in again with that Bugsman's Glow and putting the colour back into the highlights of the waistcoat and then using the Screamer Pink again on the trousers, putting in the highlights, putting in those flat areas and just getting a lot more colour back into it, leaving those crevices so that the known oil still sits in the recessed areas and adds a nice depth and three-dimensionality to everything. It's then on to his giant cleaver, so I'm using Lead Belcher for the metal blade here. Lead Belcher is my go-to for metal. It just gives a really, really nice sheen, but also a nice dark colour. It's not particularly bright like silver. For dungeon settings such as you find in HeroQuest, I like metal items to be nice and rusty and worn. So I'm using the known oil again and putting a shaded layer on here in order to tamp down that colour some. For all of my Hero Quest bases, I've used this Humbrol polished steel. Now, whereas everything else is acrylic paint, this is actually a kind of enamel paint. So you really want to use a different kind of brush with this because you're going to have to clean the brush using white spirits rather than water. I like my bases to be a plain single colour so as to not take away from the actual miniature themselves. But I also like it to have a little bit of detail so it's not completely flat. And this this polished steel really does achieve that and we'll see that later. Now I want this blade to look as if it's actually been used by the zombie to cut up some unfortunate adventurers. So I'm using this reddish brown here and I'm using it as a glaze. It's watered down and then I'm just stippling it onto the blade, building up some colour on here. Now that's great for old dried blood but I want to punch up the colour a bit more so I'm using some fresher brighter corn red here and stippling that on top. And then finally a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet spattered on there for some fresh gore. With the Humbrol Metal Coat polished steel dry on the base, you can now use a soft cloth and actually buff or polish it up. And you can see here it really does have a lovely shine when you get a bit of elbow grease in and actually buff it. It really picks up the light nicely and it gives a bit of extra detail to that base without taking too much away. It's just a really nice little finish to it. I really do like it. It gives that extra little bit of quality to the bases. It's not just a flat paint, but it gives it a nice look. And here you can see my finished zombies. The two at the front here have got that Bugman's Glow and Screamer Pink colour scheme that I've just shown you in this video, whereas the two at the back have got a yellow and blue colour scheme just to make things a bit different and to vary them up. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to tell us how you get on with painting, please leave a message in the comments below. Or if you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please get in touch. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here and there's going to be plenty more of this coming up. Until next time though, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.